Welcome back. In this module, I'm going to show how to add another peripheral to the MIPS FPGA system. Specifically, we're going to add the PMOD SPI light sensor built by Digilent. This sensor is available from Digilent at this website shown and costs about $10. It produces an 8-bit light value from 0 to 255. The steps for expanding the MIPS FPGA system to include this peripheral are very similar to those we used for adding the buzzer in the last module. So we're going to add light sensor hardware, memory map the I.O., make the physical connection, and then write software to drive that peripheral. Let's start with adding the light sensor hardware. This light sensor uses an SBI interface, a serial peripheral interface. This interface sends 8 to 16 bits of information serially, most significant bit first. In this system, MIPS FPGA is the master, and the PMOD ambient light sensor is the slave. So the master's SDO, or serial data out pin, and the slave's SDI, serial data in pin, are not used. Let's look at the timing waveforms of the master signals. So in this case, MIPS FPGA's signals. We'll focus on S-clock, SCK, and SDI, serial data in, because those are the only signals that we'll use in this system. We're only receiving input from the ambient light sensor. On each rising edge of the clock, the master will sample one of the bits, starting at the most significant bit first. So bit 7, in this case all the way down to bit 0. The light sensor fits nicely into the PMOD ports of the Nexus 4 DDR board and has the following interface. It has a low asserted chip select line, serial data out, SDO, the serial clock, S clock, ground, and the power supply. When the chip select line, CS, is zero, light sensor data is produced one bit at a time on SDO on the falling edge of S clock. For this device to work, S clock has to be between 1 and 4 megahertz, and the light sensor data actually consists of 15 bits, three leading zeros, eight bits of light sensor data, and four trailing zeros. We've provided the light sensor module for you in MFP HB SBI light dot V. It generates a serial clock, S clock, at 3.125 megahertz, 16 times slower than the system clock of 50 megahertz. It samples SDO from the light sensor. Remember that this is connected to the serial data in port of MIPS FPGA, and it samples each bit right before the rising edge of S clock. It samples 16 bits of the PMOD ALS's SDO. About every 100 milliseconds, this light sensor module moves the red value from the light sensor into the 8-bit signal value. This is the memory mapped output of the module. It includes only the 8-bit light sensor value and removes the leading ones and trailing zeros of the SBI interface. This module is located in the MIPS FPGA Labs distribution. Our next step is to memory map the I.O. We'll memory map that 8-bit signal value from the light sensor module to memory address hex BF800014. To do so, we need to modify the following Verilog modules. After we've done that, we can write MIPS assembly language, or C, to read from that light sensor value. Step three is to make the physical connection from the light sensor hardware up through the MIPS hierarchy to the Nexus 4 DDR board. So we'll connect the chip select signal, CS, serial clock, S clock, and serial data in signal, SDI, through MIPS FPGA, and then to PMOD port A on the Nexus 4 DDR board. Pins 1, 4, and 3 are the chip select, serial clock, and serial data in pins, respectively. In order to do so, we need to modify the following Verilog modules. These tables show the physical connections from the Nexus 4 DDR board to the PMOD ALS hardware. Remember that the chip select and serial clock are sent by the master, in this case MIPS FPGA, so they are outputs from the Nexus 4 DDR board. And SDI, serial data in, is an input into the MIPS FPGA system. Again, the light sensor value is memory mapped to hex BF800014. To complete the physical connection, we'll connect the PMOD ALS board into PMOD port A of the Nexus 4 DDR board. 
The final step of expanding the MIPS FPGA system to include the light sensor is to write driver software. Here's an example of some driver software available in the MIPS FPGA Labs distribution. This software displays the value of the light sensor on the LEDs and the seven segment displays. So this software enables the two rightmost digits on the seven segment displays and then displays the light sensor value on both the LEDs and the seven segment displays. So let's demonstrate the ambient light sensor in hardware. As before, we'll turn on the Nexus 4 DDR board after we've changed those Verilog modules and recompiled our MIPS FPGA system in Vivado, we'll open our hardware manager and download that bit file onto our board. Start the MIPS FPGA system. We can see it running its default program. Open a command shell and run load MIPS FPGA.bat to load the software driver. You can see the ambient light sensor plugged into PMOD port A on the right. And you can see the value that the light sensor is detecting displaying on both the seven segment displays and the LEDs. So as we change the value that it receives, for example, if we block out the light, or as we shine a light on it, you can see the value changing. Digilin offers a number of other peripheral devices that plug nicely into the PMOD ports. For example, cameras, keypads, etc. You can add these and other peripheral devices in a similar way. Write the hardware modules, memory map the I.O., make the physical connections, and then write the driver software.